Hi, I'm Martin Kenny. I volunteer at the Old Low Light Heritage Centre and from where, prior to the lockdown, I would lead guided walks and give occasional talks. One of the talks I've given in the past was called Import Export Traffic on the Tyne, which touches on the ship types visiting the Tyne and some of the problems associated with the different cargoes and ship design. This is an abbreviated version of the same talk. Until recently, coal has played a major role in shipping, from the Briggs and Snows of the 16th century up to the modern-day bulk carriers. The last coal was exported from the Tyne in 1998, and in the same week the first coal was imported. Today, there are zero coal imports. The very same bulk carriers now visit the river carrying the coal substitute wood pellets, and there has been a significant investment in port infrastructure to enable the handling of up to 1.8 million tonnes annually. These are the hoppers which are used for the transfer from ship to shore storage silos and then by rail direct to power stations. Wood pellets are a non-fossil fuel and manufactured principally in North America and Scandinavia. They are made solely from compressed sawdust and wood shavings. The dust associated with the pellets can cause a dust explosion under appropriate conditions. Spontaneous combustion of the material can occur after a long period of time. Wood pellets also undergo oxidation to produce carbon monoxide, which is toxic and flammable, and carbon dioxide. In a closed space, such as an unventilated ship's hold, this can lead to a dangerous reduction in the oxygen concentration. The largest bulk carrier to enter the port of Tyne was the Allen Penting, at 75,000 tonnes dead weight, but the largest bulk carrier in the world was the Vale Brazil at 440,000 tonnes dead weight. Dead weight simply is the amount of cargo in tonnes that a ship can carry. The Port of Tyne has a container terminal. This is not on the same scale as Tilbury or Southampton because its primary purpose is the feeder trade, whereby smaller container ships pick up at the larger deep water ports to deliver to the smaller shallower ports. In 2017, the Port of Tyne handled 57,000 TEUs, an increase of 8% on 2016, but in 2018, 66,000 TEUs were handled, an increase of 16% on 2017. TEU is an abbreviation for 20-foot equivalent units, i.e. 20-foot long container, although most boxes today are 40-footers. Container ships have their own individual problems from incorrectly declared weights, badly stowed cargo, wind heel due to their large side areas, and a phenomenon known as parametric rolling due to their hull shape. Prior to lockdown, the ferries and cruise ships were major contributors to the port. The number of passengers using the port's international passenger terminal in 2018 was 748,000, an increase of 4% compared to 2017, creating records for both ferry passengers, 621,000, and cruise passengers, 127,000. The number of cruise ships remained consistent with 2017 at 52. Row row ferries, roll on roll off, and cruise ships both have high windage areas, but their major problem is rapid loss of stability after hull damage. The reason is that by the very nature they have large open spaces, meaning that flooding can take place very quickly over large areas. In the case of row row ferries, this has been ameliorated by the Stockholm Agreement of 1996, since amended, requiring extra buoyancy and other measures to limit the rapid loss of stability. In the case of cruise ships, the mitigation is provided by dividing the ship into separate watertight compartments known as subdivision. It's impossible to make a ship unsinkable, but to make it more difficult, that's the concept. Anyone having looked out to sea from the coastline can't have missed the car carriers. Typically painted blue, looking very boxy and not streamlined at all. Their trade means they need lots of internal space to protect the cars from the salt spray. Also, cars don't weigh as much as many other cargoes when stowage is considered, i.e. the space occupied around a car, that's top, bottom, sides, front and back. In 2018, the number of cars handled across the port's three car terminals has decreased, compared to the previous year, from 600,000 to 526,000. This may have been caused by consumers moving away from diesel, but we're not sure. Car carriers don't have many problems although it may be worth com commenting on two areas of concern. To avoid the transmission of unwanted organisms in ship's ballast, there are strict regulations about changing ballast deep sea. 
If this is done incorrectly and too many free surfaces, that's partially filled tanks, are allowed to develop, the ship may become unstable. A second area of concern is a vehicle breaking loose in heavy weather. A heavy vehicle, such as a forklift truck, can cause mayhem once it starts careening around a cargo deck. It's a sort of runaway chemical reaction. One breaks loose, then another, and another, and so on, and no one is going to go into a cargo deck to try and secure a rampaging mass of steel. The port also has a healthy recycling business with its scrap metal export. European Metals Recycling Facility at the Port of Tyne handles tons of scrap metal every year from factories, demolition companies, the public tradesmen and scrap metal merchants. The processed material is sold to the Mediterranean, North America and the Far East and the port exports, exports up to 40,000 tonnes just on one vessel. Loading has to be started slowly because of possible damage to the ship's structure. If using electromagnets, the ship's magnetism may be changed, thus affecting the magnetic compass. Certain types of scrap, known as swarf, contain oil and cotton waste, making them more prone to spontaneous combustion. The stability and strength of the ship has to be carefully calculated due to the weight of the cargo. This includes bending moment and shear force, which clearly has been exceeded in both of these photographs. In order to maintain the river channel to a depth of 10 metres up to Whitehall Point and then 6 metres up to Newcastle, regular dredging has to take place. The survey vessel Lincius regularly monitors the depths and investigates any reported underwater obstructions. The UK dredger Marlin is a regular visitor to the Tyne, seen here passing the Groin Lighthouse. And finally, the workhorse that takes out and returns pilots from ships, Collingwood. She was officially named in 2008 and has an aluminium hull and fitted with radar, satellite compass and suspension seats with a top speed of 22 knots, costing £750,000 in 2008. Not forgetting the tugs, Switzer Sun, Switzer Tyne and the Forth, which also service the ports of Blyth and Sunderland. There are many other cargoes, such as tea, plywood, grain, oil products, and the varied ship types which visit the port of Tyne. Maybe in a future chat I can put some together to give a more varied insight into ship operations. Don't forget the old low light and all that it has to offer. Thanks to all of you. Bye now.